well, yes, we can extend you some more loans if you give us all of your gold. Well, they may ask for all the, all the gold that's left in Fort Knox before all is said and done. And by the way, uh, as Ron Paul has pointed out, we really don't know how much gold there really is left in, in Fort Knox. Incredible. Uh, separately, they're trying globally, as you know, in Europe, the United States, to pass all these draconian anti-free speech, anti-internet um, pieces of legislation. And then there's separately a National Geographic saying, oh my gosh, the big sunstorm's coming up, uh, could knock out the power grid, knock out the internet. Oh, we've got to give our internet rights up. Stuxnet, which is admittedly a U.S.-Israeli operation, uh, that's not... Uh, that's not debatable. So we've got we've got all of this happening, all of this uh, beginning to unravel here, and we're being told uh, that we've got to prepare, you know, for a cyber attack on the internet. But then I even read Pentagon reports where they go, "We'll attack ourselves to test things." This looks like the perfect false flag that during this economic implosion to convert us to the new world order, they're not going to want. James Wesley Rawls, Alex Jones, and others out there on the internet being able to counter their lies minute by minute. I mean, already when they put lies out, I'm able to respond to it, and the White House has responded to us on subjects like shutting down power plants. We're definitely having an effect. Uh, and I tell you, it feels good to know there's thousands of prominent people, because it'd be scary if we were alone. Thank God people like you and others. Uh, but then I see things like Rand changing directions, joining partly with the neocons, and really changing his body language and things, and looking scared. We've had reporters go talk to him in person, and I'm seeing a lot of people line up, and I'm seeing a lot of people we thought were 100% in our camp, not all the way, and folks we didn't think in our camp are showing they are. I mean, I'm really seeing battle lines being drawn. I mean, I'm ranting there, but let's uh, give us your take on the whole Rand Paul endorsement of Mitt Romney and endorsing uh, uh, Iran sanctions his dad was against and hiring a bunch of neocons. Uh, Alex, I think you have it exactly right. I think battle lines are being drawn. And just like with World War II, uh, before the war, everyone lined themselves under the Allied or Axis powers, we could very well see a situation uh, much like World War II, where these cabals get formed and uh, they could be shifting in the short term, but uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see where uh, Iran ends up, where Russia ends up, where China ends up. Yeah, something tells me that the United States is not going to have a lot of friends in World War III. It, and what we're seeing right now economically could very well, in the course of the next five years, turn into the beginnings of World War III. It could get literally that bad. Already we're seeing uh, governments faced with, you know, votes of no confidence, but things could get to the point where it's not just internal dissent and internal politics. We could see, you know, the push of bayonets by the time things are done. You know, I'm often fond of saying that when you stop making your payments on your car, they come take your you tow your car away. Well, what happens when a government defaults on its sovereign debt? That they may come tow the whole kingdom away. Well, that's what I was going to get to next. Uh, look, I see these neocon publications going, Jones doesn't like the wars in Syria and Libya. He must be for the Muslims. For them, there, our government is using Al Qaeda in these countries, and it's in the LA Times. They're not even hiding it, it's the height of insulting our intelligence. They're putting, you know, they say if they overthrow Syria, they're going to kill all the Jews and force the Christians out. And I'm supposed to get behind that. I mean, it, it's total cuckoo land. The Russians are encircled, uh, threatening to nuke Europe now. They didn't even talk like that during the Cold War. Uh, there's all sorts, as you said, battle lines being drawn. They have neocons saying, Jones must work for the Russians because he doesn't want to have a war. No, I work for America and my family. Bankers captured America. They're planning to, it's bankers launching drones. It's bankers raising my taxes. It's bankers setting up highway checkpoints. It's bankers launching the TSA. If the Russians were doing any of this, I'd be saying a war. You know, I, but we're so designed to fight the Chinese or the Russians, and the Chinese, of course, are allied with the banksters, that, 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 that we can't imagine an economic 
like Cicero said, the enemy that comes openly to the gate with their standard, no, no problem. It's the internal infiltrator. How do you get America, the police, the military, who on average are great people, I've talked to a lot of military and police, to understand we've already been taken over, the flag's only up there in symbol, and that we're being led into something that's probably meant to destroy us. I mean, if you look at all the pieces, I, I think you're hinting at the fact we're being set up. I, I think we definitely are. Um, and the, the amount of internal dissent, uh, I think, is only going to be exacerbated. You know, there's already the red state, blue state paradigm. But could you imagine if that got to the point where we literally got to the point where states wanted to secede from the Union, just like in the 1860s? It could come to that. And internationally, as I mentioned before, we could see the equivalent of World War II, uh, but here, here we might even be tossing nukes around. It, it, the, the full implications of this are absolutely staggering. And to think that the average American is still really concerned with what the, what the movie stars are wearing to the latest film premieres and who got who pregnant is just, it absolutely boggles me to think that, that are still caught up in the bread and circus. Oh, it's the matrix. Speak to that, because I still occasionally have somebody stop their motorcycle and go, hey, Mr. Tinfoil Hat. Most people don't now. But even if they're awake, they say, what do you do? And then to watch the tabloids and Dancing with the Stars. And I mean, I mean, again, I'm not abnormal that I can't go to a movie now and not think about this stuff. I'm not abnormal that when I'm at a swim meet with my kids, all I'm thinking about is this. Because this is, their, this is, this is the same stuff we saw before World War I and World War II, but now with all these super weapons, as you were saying. And you just wish people, imagine what's going to happen in America as this whole... It's like 10 torpedoes of crisis are coming at us. All 10 may hit us, three may only hit us, but some of them are going to hit us, and I don't know what's going to happen if during the Great Depression, university estimates are 7 million people died, starved to death, or died from complications of malnutrition when people were Christian and hardworking and 90% somewhat self-sufficient. Now we're 90% urban, totally unself-sufficient. Half of the 10% in the rural areas are somewhat self-sufficient. I mean, it's almost like a road-like scenario, and for those of us that are informed, it's not we're elitist, oh, we're informed, you're dumb. We're like, for God's sakes, I wish you'd listen to us, and get because being prepared is one of our only checks against this. I'm ranting, but continue commenting on what it's like for you to see the zombie public and then to know, I mean, Medvedev and Putin are saying, we're lining nukes up. If you move missiles in, we're going to nuke you. Obama says, I'm moving the missiles in. And generally from history, I mean, am I, am I wrong in saying generally the Russians don't bluff? I mean, they don't. I've seen a lot of cases where they threaten stuff like this. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much straight talkers when you come down to it. They have their, you know, they have their propaganda arm. But uh, what you hear out of what used to be the Politburo and now out of the, the, um, the Russian federal government is pretty much what you see is what you get. And if they're, if they're posturing that way, you can see that the blood is in the water and they're doing, you know, in, in Russia, they always think in terms of Mother Russia and they will always keep that as the bottom line. They will never compromise their sovereignty. And when, it comes, when push comes to shove, they'll do whatever it takes. They'll side with whoever they need to side with to make sure that Mother Russia survives. <clears throat> now, um, it's, it's difficult to say how it's all going to play out. And like you, I'm amazed to see so many people still in zombie mode, but it's encouraging to see people reading blogs like mine and listening to radio shows like yours to see how many people truly are waking up. They're making tangible, practical steps to getting their families prepared in terms of water filtration and food storage, communications equipment, and so forth, because they recognize that there is going to be disruption ahead. And as you pointed out before, we live in a much more fragile society than we lived in in the 1930s. It's, things are going to come unglued in the next 24 months, as near as I can tell. Well, I'm seeing the public, and even the media admits this, 
now that there's less money and we're in a deep recession slash depression, more fights, more arrogance. I mean, a bunch of spoiled brats, and, and, and I'm spoiled too compared to my dad or my grandfather because they grew up on farms. I mean, I can't fix one-tenth of what my dad can fix. He couldn't fix what his dad could fix because back then you had to make the combine work because there wasn't money to go to the bank. And, and I think about my people like my grandfather who got up at 4.30 in the morning and quit working at you know 7, 8 at night, and, and I've worked on that farm during the summer, and then I look at what Americans are like today. My God, they have no idea what they're facing. If the Great Depression could bring people like my grandfather and his parents to their knees, what is this going to do to us? Yes, we, we live in a sissified generation and a dumbed-down generation, and unfortunately, we're going to see a massive die-off. I can't see any other solution. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's going to come to that. It won't be anything that we precipitate. We're just going to be spectators and hopefully uh, going to pull through this. But we're going to witness perhaps as much as 80% of the American population dying off by the time all is said and done. Because if there is an orchestrated collapse, we are unfortunately living in a house of cards and the vast majority of the citizenry has no preparation. They have two or three days worth of food at home, uh, half a tank of gas, no stored fuel. They are gonna be completely behind the power curve and they're gonna be like sheep for the slaughter. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm up to this. And then you look at the average person, they revel in chicken necked weakness. I mean, I went to a couple stores yesterday with my son and I was watching the people. And I mean, I, I guess television and this soft culture did it, but it looked like they'd been shot with like a mutation slash weenie gun. And the women were, were henpecking their husbands and, and boyfriends and henpecking at the registers and Hen pecking at me at the, I mean, I'm not trying to be negative because there's a lot of great people, but it seems like when you're in the city, you're really around a bunch of scum. You get out in the country, it's a little bit better. Have you noticed this? Oh, definitely. Uh, the, the level of civility in our society is dropping. Uh, the, as I referred to it previously, the sissification of our society is definitely in full swing. Uh, very few people are willing to stand up for what's right. They just want to go along and get along and make as few waves as possible. Blob along. They want to, like, blob along. Yeah. Yeah, and it. I hate to say it, but it's, it's like those websites you see that have all the pictures of the Walmart shoppers. That's the society we're living in. We, we live in a society of, of sheep really, sheeple, as uh, one radio host used to refer to them. Uh, we have an overweight generation, an undereducated generation, and a generation that's fixated on you know, their day-to-day -day pleasures. And when true hard times come, they're going to be completely unprepared, and they're going to fall apart mentally and physically. They're not up to the task physically because they're overweight, out of shape, and, you know, eating, you know, horrible food. Mentally, they're not up to the challenge either. We have a huge 